Today we'll be touring an absolutely incredible Star Wars themed home theater. This fully custom theater cost $580,000 and took over one year to build. Its room inside of a room construction is a perfect execution of sound isolation and room treatment. It features an 11.4.4 Wisdom Audio System, Storm Audio ISP24 Elite Processor, Kaleidoscape, MadVR Envy, and a 168-inch screen with a four-way masking system. We'll meet with the homeowner, a rep from Wisdom Audio, Storm Audio, and the integrator to see just what all went into this amazing home theater. All right, guys, we are here in an incredible home theater. Eric, thanks so much for inviting us here. You've got a beautiful home. You've got an incredible home theater, and I'd love to take my audience through all the components, all of the gear. We're gonna talk about your story. We're gonna talk to your calibrator, your integrator, as well as some of the brands that are actually represented here, which is Wisdom Audio and Storm. But let's start off with the room dimensions. How big is your room? We are at 15 by 20 by nine. And then we have a little bit in the back for a little projector room. So another two and a half foot back there. Cool, so. and we'll definitely show you guys all of that. Looking up front, man, you've got this big, massive screen. I love immersive images and you went pretty much wall to wall. Tell us about this. I wish I could have gone a little bit more, but yeah. <laughs> so we're 168 inches. Uh, and then we have uh, a six and a half inches on all sides for the frame because it's a four-way masking screen. Um, but it, uh, I tried to get as maximize the amount of, amount of screen I could get in here as, as much as possible. Sure. So you mentioned the four-way masking screen. What does that mean? Why did you want to use a masking? What are the benefits of it? And what does that allow you to do here in your theater? I, so I love the different sizes of the films mm -hmm. and things like Ben-Hur and Hateful Eight and and uh, their Rogue One's also in a, in a weird aspect ratio. Sure. So, and then I also love gaming, so I do the 16 by nine, so it doesn't uh, stretch very well. Um, but also I have an Envy, which stretches things out a little bit too. So, sure. but the masking is just, gives me that original, you know, the way it was meant to be seen. Right. And, and I, I like, you know, getting rid of the bars. Sure. So it, it, I enjoy it very much. So with this screen though, I mean, this is crazy versatile. Some masking screens, they're just horizontal. So they'll do the sides or yeah. some of them are vertical. Yours is four way. So you can compress all the way down to like four by three. Yes. You can do, of course, your standard 16 by nine, 2.35 to one. And I think you even mentioned, is your screen so, wider than 2.35? Yeah, so because of the, the other aesthetics of the room, um, it just happened to be that the, the aspect ratio came out to 276 to 1. Okay. Uh, and 276 as a, as a ultra Panavision mm -hmm. 70. So yeah. um, it just happened to work out that way. <laughs> but yeah, the four-way masking, I can actually close the entire screen off if I wanted to. Yeah. But the, they're kind of the, the ones that, that show up a lot are the 2 to 1, the 2.35, 2.4 to uh, 1, and the 16 by 9. So those are kind of the ones I jump back and forth between. But I have like nine different settings I could pre-program and, and play around with. But, but those get me, again, of all the best movies. And then I stretch some of the things that are different than that to those sure. one of those. So. Yeah, totally makes sense. We'll talk about MadVR when you get to looking at your <laughs> rack. So we've got this beautiful big screen. I love how the fact that even up front, it's just really dark. So that allows it makes a big difference in the contrast yeah. and with the projector. So that's again with with the masking. If I mask off the screen, my my quality of the projected image gets better with Oops. the masking. So. Yeah, that perceived contrast. We saw that at M Wave. Um, there was a, a brand manufacturer, and they put the masking on, and I had no idea like how much better the image could look perceptually. Nothing really changed physically, but perceptually, my brain said. Dude, that's crazy. It, it better. helps your eyes. Yeah, it, it it gives your it gives the screen better contrast with your eyes. Yeah. Because if you see that extra white, even though there's nothing bouncing on it, or even if there is kind of the black bouncing off of it, you see it. Sure. And it looks a million times better with the masking. And this this is um, V Lux. So when the mask comes in, okay. it it just doesn't reflect anything. It's crazy dark, crazy dark. Yeah. So, so. all the light gets absorbed into that. So we have this beautiful wide massive screen, four-way masking. What'd you go with to pair it up with as far as your projector? So originally I had a, a Sony, like I don't remember the model number, but it was, it was about a $40,000 projector. Wow. 
and I had put an order in it, and it was during COVID, mm -hmm. and they couldn't deliver it. And finally, Sony came out with the new 5,000, 6,000, 7,000. Yeah. I was looking at the 7,000, but there was just, all it was was just a little brighter. And mm -hmm. I have a, you know, completely light-controlled room here. Sure. So I just didn't need to spend the extra money for the 7,000. So I went for the 6,000. Right. It's got the zooming I needed to ma for the masking. It's got... Uh, um, I had plenty of brightness. It was brighter than the one I was going to order. Yeah. That was, you know, almost three times as much. Um, so I just ended up saving a lot of money on uh, on, on this projector, the six thousand. So. Yeah, and it's got a beautiful image. Definitely love that. And one thing that I really like is when homeowners have the ability, like yourself, to put the projector outside the room. And so you've done some things as a result of that to kind of keep the noise, keep the heat, kind of walk us through what's behind that wall. My number one goal of this whole room was controlling the sound. Mm -hmm. I've, got a, I've got a young daughter, I've got neighbors. Luckily, they're not too close, but I still didn't want to disturb them. I, I, I work a lot of hours, so after, after work, I want to come in here midnight if, I, if it's midnight and watch my movie. Run as loud as I want to as, as, as to get that full effect. Sure. Um, so the, everything, everything was done to control, one, to lower the, the noise level in the room. So the ACs, the AD, AC ducts are, are S-shaped and um, stuck in a whole other room and a, a bunch of things. That back room has its own AC, supply in <laughs> the other oh, direction. The return? The or? return, the okay. return. Yeah, supply and return in the room. So it keeps the equipment you know, uh, cool back there. Yeah. I have a, um, a two by six wall in between here, all filled with um, uh, rock wool and an uh, uh, acoustic uh, uh, window. Mm -hmm. So it keeps the sound on that side of the window. It's yep. got double panes. One pane is thicker than the other. Nice. So all special order stuff and, and worked out well. Worked wow. out well. And wow. I don't hear the projector at all. So. No, and that's the thing. And at any point, even when we didn't have any sound playing, we'll get to your speakers in a moment, but even when we didn't have anything playing, you absolutely could not hear anything from that room. And Again, having, whether it's a hush box or having an isolated room like you've got, and I love the fact that you've got this cool door <laughs> that we can just open up. You've got easy access in case you want to upgrade the projector down the road. Um, in this case, you don't have a lamp to replace, but if you did have a lamp, you could easily replace that. Clean your filters, which you should, and I probably should too. Yeah. Not real good at that myself. But, uh, but I love the fact that you've got that outside the room. So that, that was also a kind of important uh, uh, piece of equipment selection was not a bulb. Mm -hmm. I'm a, 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 a crazy movie freak, and I watch a ton of movies. And I, before this room was even fully built, I, I went through like 300 hours. Mm -hmm. I would have been replacing a bulb, you know, twice a year, right? Uh, with a 500-hour bulb. So that's I love the uh, the 20,000 hours on the on the laser. So yeah, and you mentioned that he actually was watching about 300 hours. You were sharing <laughs> me with the story. Before you got this screen in, you, did you say you rented? Yeah. So, a so screen? my integrator, uh, uh, Innovative Sight and Sound, they, I uh, said, look, I really could use something. I, I, everything's here. All the equipment was in. The speakers were in. The projector was in. The projector booth was in. The, all the amps were already hooked up. Um, they were just working on all of the uh, the fabric walls and all of the aesthetics in here. Yeah. And that took you know many months, so I was really wanting to watch. So luckily, they just had something that they had ordered for somebody and didn't quite fit the room, so it was stuck in their storage. Yeah. And uh, they gave me a price for it, and I said, "Look, you know, I really don't want to buy it. I've got another. You know, sure. you guys are ordering me a, a screen, right. a very expensive a screen. One, yeah. So uh, how about we cut the price in half and just rent it to me, and I'll give it to you back when I'm, when my screen gets in." <laughs> that so, is that's um, a serious commitment. After man. after every day after the construction guys left, they would clean up the stuff, move it to the side, like, scaffolding to the yeah. side of the room, and I'd be able to watch my movies on a 120 inch screen. So that that's a commitment, man. <laughs> Instead of waiting the full year it took to build this thing, or even longer probably. You're sitting here enjoying it with all the dust and everything under here yeah. and all the, the the parts and everything just kind of in a disarray, but you could still enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, they'd, and they'd come in in the morning and they put a plastic over the screen so they didn't mess it up with all the, the stuff going on. So it worked well. So, Eric, I've seen some really cool rooms that have utilized Wisdom Audio, and you've chosen that same brand for your room. Kind of walk us through those choices, maybe what speakers you have and what layout you have in this room. Yeah, so... Um, I was looking at a couple different ones, but I, I, I like first that Wisdom is, is, is kind of built and owned and operated in, in the U.S. Uh, a lot of the stuff I chose was, was U.S. manufacturers. Okay. 
Uh, it's not always possible when, when most stuff is made sure. in China or somewhere else. So, sure. um, but I did my best I could. Um, but the Wisdom Audio, just the, the, that higher end is, is, is very unique in pretty much other, any other manufacturer out there. There are a few that still they use that kind of technology, the right. planar magnetic technology. I'm you know, a big audio nut. Uh, I pl play music, and uh, so I'm kind of stickler on, the, on, on that high end. I like that's kind of where a lot of stuff happens. The planar magnetics are very similar to a lot of the, the, the ribbon tweeters I've been used to. Sure. And I just the, like the technology a lot. I, I think it gives me that very high end, very crisp, you know, very fast. Um, so I just like the technology. Yeah. Um, I did have a budget on this room, I'm not, <laughs> so um, I couldn't go for some of the, their super high-end stuff, okay. and they can get kind of ridiculous on some of the prices there, so sure. I got, got a mid-level, okay. but um, um, all of these speakers have kind of planar magnetics in it. Um, the, the LCRs have their, their um, uh, line array technology, which is very interesting to me, um, but, and then also their subwoofers are, are kind, of, kind of unique too. So. Um, my big thing was first, um, I wanted to keep the sound in the room, right? And I also wanted some aesthetics to this, so I went with their their in in wall speakers. Okay. Uh, yeah, even down to their in wall subwoofers. Right. And looking at the front, dude, I love seeing somebody that chose to do an LCR. I think there's no better sound than you can get than three identical speakers, vertically positioned. Um, exact identical because when you have sound that pans from left to right it's completely smooth and then you've got these pretty unique subwoofers wisdom audio has always kind of intrigued me that they can get some serious tactile bass in this room like i was feeling it you know in my legs and in my body and i asked joe i'm like hey joe what size are in you know in those particular subwoofers because i don't know their exact models and i'm thinking he's going to say yeah there's a 12 in there he's like no it's kind of like a six by nine man and so that technology is pretty fascinating, and maybe you know a little bit more about it than I do about it's, how that's defined. They're basically this equivalent surface area to about 13 inch okay. subwoofers. So it's not, you know, it's not like the big 15s or yeah. the 24s or something like that. But sure. I mean, for the size of this room, um, uh, and there's, I have four of them, so mm -hmm. each of them can handle about a thousand watts. I'm not right. pushing okay. that much. Two in front, two in the back. Yep, two in the front, two in the back. Um, it, it's enough. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't have it turned, you know, crazy up. I, I don't, I'm not a big subwoofer guy. I, I love the, that feel. Sure. I just don't want to only feel that. <laughs> I, like, I like the high end. I like that crispness. Yeah. I like the details. I like, I like a movie that's kind of very quiet mm -hmm. and the guy's whispering or whatever and, and something's going on and then sure. maybe there's an explosion and, right. but it's not, it's not just pounding you sure. the full, the full movie. <laughs> yeah. Joe, it's a pleasure to have you here at the site, man. This is a cool room. Very cool. And you came here yesterday and spent quite a amount of time dialing this system in. And so I would love for you to kind of walk my audience through maybe the importance of calibration, maybe even some things that you found out about that. Right on. Well, thanks, Michael, for having us out again. Uh, I love working with you guys and Youth Man does a great job uh, promoting our industry for sure. So a couple things. The first thing, and this is a perfect example. So uh, the client has been living in this room for quite a while using the system. And we've got a brand new thing that we like to talk about, which is called, it's never too late to calibrate. Nice. And so I did, I came in early. Uh, I spent about eight hours in this room yesterday. Uh, and calibration is the most important part of the room and the entire experience probably more so than, in, than anything else, right? You can have a great room and great products, but if you don't take that final step to really dial it all in and make it all work together, um, you know, you're just not getting your full value, sure. right? It's like having a Ferrari with, you know, skinny little tires from a 69 <laughs> Chevy. It's just, yeah. it, it's the performance is there, but you right. just can't utilize all of it. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that we do when we calibrate that are, you know, different than the easy button, right? Dirac, um, the optimizer with Trinov, Odyssey. There's a lot of different calibration tools out there that consumers can use, that dealers can use, and anybody can use, really. And it's not that they're not good, it's that they require a lot of knowledge to understand, you know, what the room is doing mm -hmm. and what the speakers are doing. Uh, because what the room is doing is, is not something that you can really fix. You know, if you know what your speakers do, it's much easier to figure out what you can repair and what you can't. 
little things like, you know, having a masking screen that's got a pocket behind it. You know, there's going to be some acoustic issues with that that you can't fix. And the automated systems, if you just hit the easy button, the automated systems don't know sure. that that's what's happening. And so they'll try to fix things where they shouldn't try mm -hmm. to fix things. Understanding how those auto calibration systems work and telling them what to do and what not to do is also a big part of that. Yeah. So, Joe, you've done, let's just say, a lot of calibrations. How many, roughly, do you think you've done in the many, many years you've been in this industry? Boy, 40 years, you know, how many a year? <laughs> last year we were talking, I probably did 25 to 30 calibrations just yeah. last year alone. Um, you know, five this year already, and we're not even out of January yet, sure. you know, so, and I've got another one I'm doing later this week. So you see things that, you know, are the same, and so you know where there's gonna be acoustic issues, okay. right? Um, the way the baffle walls are built, hard surfaces next sure. to a soft surface, you know, little pockets and things like that. All those things show right up immediately mm -hmm. when you look them on a, on a uh, calibration system, right. you know, a measurement system that, you know, shows you exactly there's a big peak, which is a, you know, a reflection, mm -hmm. and then there's a big dip, which is a cancellation. Sure. And, you know, you can't fix those kinds of things, yeah. and you have to understand what those are before you start trying to, trying to calibrate a room. Yeah, one thing that, that I see the value in someone like yourself doing a calibration, professional calibration, is I have my own, you know, experience and expertise, but it's typically in my room. Like, I'm not going to friends' houses and calibrating their system. They're doing their own. Right. So you've seen different shapes, different size, different, you know, acoustic, not acoustic, but design features in different rooms. And like you said, right. those are going to interact with the room. And you and I have talked so much about you can have incredible, incredible products like Wisdom, but if you don't calibrate it, don't dial them in, then it's not going to perform its best. Um, some of you guys say, hey, I think I need another subwoofer. Adding another subwoofer doesn't automatically mean you're going to get better bass. They right. actually fight against each other. Right. And so being able to understand the metrics, understand the graphs and the charts, frequency response, time alignment, and those types of things, and being able to take your experience of all those years to combine with a really, really great performing room, then you've got a great equation and you, per, you, know, you can dial that in to where it sounds really, really great. Right, so that's a perfect example. This particular room has four subwoofers, mm -hmm. two up in the front, two in the back, they're in the wall, the two front ones run through some vents up into the front parts of the room. You would think, oh, you're just gonna have lots of bass mm -hmm. and it's gonna be great, but every one of those subwoofers is at a different distance from the listening position, Correct. right? So we have a system with our smart V8 software that we use to measure the rooms mm -hmm. where we phase align those subs. And when you're actually looking at a phase trace on a computer screen and you're trying to get all those phase traces, you know, they might be lined up like this, mm -hmm. they might be lined up like that. And so then you have to start working with delays so that they're all lined up at the same point. If you can just get your subwoofers to be all the same mm -hmm. and align with your speakers yeah. so that everything like you go, and the same thing comes from there, your subwoofers at the same time, if you can get that to happen, that's like 90%. Mm -hmm. If you can just get that part done. Rooms that have subwoofers that are all phase aligned and working together, yeah. it's like magic. Yeah. I mean, it's really a different level of performance. I'm talking about different levels. So when I calibrate at my house, I mean, I've, I use Odyssey. Pretty simple, it's the, the easy button kind easy of thing. Button. So I run Odyssey, I make a few changes. Um, I don't really use a lot of mini DSP because I know that takes even a lot more knowledge and expertise and I usually get a friend involved in that part of it. But it might take me like an hour, roughly. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. And that's to do a 7.2.4 system. So this is an 11.4.4. Roughly how long did it take you to dial this one in? Um, I was in this room for eight hours yesterday. <laughs> wow. And that was with the air conditioning turned off yeah. because some people don't even realize yeah. that, especially a room like this that's completely sealed, you know, the client even told us that they have to have special air exchangers because if there was nothing like that going on, you'd mm -hmm. suffocate in the room after a while because sure. there's no air coming in. But that air blowing in, you know, my measurement tools pick that up as pressurizing the room like sure. base, right? So you have to turn all that stuff off. Um, and then, you know, polarity. First thing we do is we check the polarity on every single speaker to make sure that's pulsing the right way, sure. you know. 
some of our products, some of our planar magnetic drivers have to be out of phase from the woofers, mm -hmm. right? So everything has to be perfectly set that way before you even do any measurements. Yeah. You've got to set all your levels, you set all your delays. Um, you know, we use a laser measurement tool to measure from the reference listing position to every single channel, so mm -hmm. we get all that. And because we use regenerative transmission line subwoofers, which is a whole other thing that Michael, I'm sure, will talk about later, those regenerative transmission line subwoofers add additional delay that a traditional subwoofer doesn't have. Right. So we have a spreadsheet now because we've measured all of ours on a clipple, yeah. and you've seen our clipple because yeah. you've been out to the factory. Yes. You even have a video that says, do you clipple? That's right, right. that's right. It's awesome. And so we've now been able to measure all of our RTL subs so we know the additional delay that we have to put onto our regular channels mm -hmm. to match up to the delay that's added because of the RTL subs. So, you know, it, it gets to be, it's science. It's not, you know, it's no voodoo, there's no sure. magic. It's just experience and it's science and knowing what to fix and what not to fix. Yeah. You know, that's a big part of it. Sure, and the room plays a huge role in that. And I, I used to think that like acoustic treatments was almost like snake oil. I don't know why, but I, I just, so that was one of the last things that I did. And what I love about Eric, he made sure that was a priority of this room. Yeah. This room is completely sealed. It's isolated. It's a room inside of a room and, and those types of things. So when you get the room right, that's a better starting point than just walking into a room that's just hard surfaces and then you're trying to fix. But the good thing is, or I guess the flip side, even a great designed room, you still have to calibrate. You still have to calibrate because there's still going to be issues. All these little things right here, mm -hmm. you know, there's a surround channel in here. All these little things sure. are, are going to have points. a reflection and that's going to show up. And you can, I mean, I could tell you that when I put it on my thing, there's probably going to be a, a peak if I just measured from here to here. Mm -hmm. You know, you could take that and figure out what the quarter wave is and say, okay, probably at 125 hertz, there's going to be a big peak. Sure. And when I set it up and do my measurement, sure enough, there's like a 12 dB peak, mm -hmm. right? Well, you can't get rid of that. Right. You know, you can, you can squish it down a little bit, but then there's also going to be a cancellation between here that happens. And, you know, so that's going to look like this right. on your measurement. And you can't push that back up because sure. then you're really pushing your drivers. Yeah. One of the things when I got here the first day, yesterday morning when we came in, the client sat down, he says, and he put on Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. right? And it was a scene where there was like all this crushing surround information coming. And he goes, now listen. And I could hear the overhead channels were like, <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, he was playing it pretty yeah, loud, but sure. it wasn't really even at reference, but it was loud. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I hope that's something that you can fix. Mm. And, you know, sure enough, because it was, you know, there was a dip in the frequency response. And so he had done the auto button, right? right? And the auto button tried to push it all up because yeah. he didn't understand that you can tell the auto button not to do this okay. certain thing if you know what's happening in the room, sure. right? Yeah. So this is something that Wisdom offers. Like this is a... Do you have like different packages? If somebody has a wisdom system, maybe they're like Eric and they're like, I've done the best that I can, or maybe they even had a local integrator and they did a good job, but he's like, man, I just, is there more? Yes. Is there so, an avenue for that or? Yes, absolutely. So the Never Too Late to Calibrate is a website that we have okay. um, and we have the world tour going on. So it's just like, you know, if you watch the Rolling Stones going on tour and they have all their tour dates listed. So mm -hmm. we have all of our dates listed for all the upcoming calibrations. Okay. There's also a link that you can, you know, talk directly to the folks at Wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have a system that has calibration capabilities, meaning you have to have a processor or you have to have DSP built into your amplifiers, you have to have a way to actually do a calibration manually, not mm -hmm. just a an Odyssey Auto button, button. Sure. although we have ways to get around those things too. Yeah. Um, but we do have different levels, right? We have a basic calibration service would be, say you've got a, you know, a, plain Jane receiver that's using our DSP amplifiers, which right. have all the calibration tools built in. We would come in and do it. We have a uh, advanced calibration, which would be if you're using a Storm or a Trinov or a mm -hmm. Lingdorf datasat type processor, yeah. uh, which is a little more complicated. Uh, we have a master level calibration, which actually includes two of our master calibration guys. So it might be myself okay. and one of our other people from Europe or the US that would come in mm -hmm. for a two day calibration. And then we have a reference calibration, 
where we actually bring in Andrew D. Cristofaro from uh, Sony Pictures. He's actually the senior supervising sound editor for Sony Pictures. He's the guy that puts the sound in the movies. Nice. Yeah. And so I just did one with him last week up in Maine uh, that was one of our reference level calibrations. And he brings a whole different level of knowledge because he knows from a reference what it's supposed to sound like sure. and where things are placed in the room, you know, how, how he places objects in the picture. Um, so we have some very, very high level calibration services available and it doesn't have to be a wisdom system if somebody you know wants to have that done we can do it sure and then you also mentioned that having the right tools and like you know in my case I've got a Marantz and so I'm using Odyssey but that's kind of limiting and yes Odyssey has even some uh, purchase software that you can buy like two hundred dollars it gives you a little bit more granularity I guess if that's a word um, granular control over the PEQs sure. and things but in this room, we're using a Storm processor. Yes. And so maybe why do you like working with Storm? Or even do you like working with Storm? Um, which we know the answer to that, but um, kind of tell us a little bit about that. So this particular room has a Storm processor, an ISP24, so it's the, the latest and greatest. Yeah. Um, what I love about the Storm product, number one, is it's, it's very simple to use, mm. right? There's other processors on the market that you know, when you get around inside them, they all have their own way of doing things, but sure. Storm has really done a great job with their GUI and their user interface. Um, they now have an easy setup thing, so, you know, a, a regular consumer could go in and, and really get it pretty good, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, you know, it's ironic that Gary and I, so you'll meet Gary shortly here, uh, Gary and I worked together at Tweeter. Uh, I was with Harmon at the time, and we had sold Synthesis in, which was their high-end theater mm -hmm. brand. And Gary was one of their one of their sales guys, right? So we go way way back. And Gary actually had my job before I came to Wisdom. Oh, cool. He left from Wisdom. He was the East Coast sales guy and you know training and calibration guy. Sure. He went to Storm Audio, and then I took his job. Right. So you know it's a small industry, and um, when you have high performance brands like Storm Audio, like Wisdom, I mean it's really a good partnership. You know, they understand it. They get the value of the calibration. They have super smart people. Actually, their main engineer in the U.S. also came from Wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big family. The audio industry, I always tell people it's like 200 people and there's 201 jobs, right? Or 200, 200 people at 199 jobs. So there's always one guy looking for a job. <laughs> right. So you better just be nice because right. you're going to run into those people over and over again. And, sure. You know, Gary's a perfect example of that, and, and working with Storm has always been fantastic. Yeah. Well, speaking of Gary, I'd love to bring him involved in this conversation and talk about what the Storm brings to this home theater. Gary, it is great to have you here at the homeowner's home. This is an incredible system. We sat through some really phenomenal demos, and I know a big part of what we heard, of course, is the wisdom audio speakers, the subwoofers but also the processing behind that, because mm -hmm. this is a big room. It's got a lot of speakers, a lot of information getting routed to different things for dedicated subwoofers. So tell us kind of how Storm Audio fits into that equation and what Storm Audio brings to the table for home theater enthusiasts. So this is a great example of, you know, a, a system that's got a really high channel count. I mean, you know, it's pretty common these days to see mostly 7.1.4 systems or 916 systems. Sure. And then here we got 11.4.4 system. Um, you know, what, what does that do for the immersive experience? Well, it actually makes it better, and here's why. You got, you know, with by having all of these base la layer channels, there's 11 of them, mm -hmm. and having discrete decoding in the storm processor, so every channel is getting something off the movie if it's available, it just really takes that immersive experience to a different level. You know, immersive audio is all about, you know, objects and all that stuff and all the technical stuff that everybody likes to talk about. But, you know, quite, quite honestly, if you don't have the right speakers in the right locations, it doesn't work. And, you know, we give you the ability to really kind of, you know, really maximize what the systems can do for really any channel size. You know, mm -hmm. even up to, we even support up to a 19 base layer system wow. now. So it's some pretty crazy stuff. So a lot of content is, is mastered, would not... 19 speakers so 
what does Storm Audio do for those? Like maybe it's only mastered in 7.1 or maybe 9.1. Do we still get to utilize all those channels? Absolutely. So, you know, we have built into our processors a, a, an engine. It's called Storm XT. And basically, this is an ambient extractor. And what it does is it says, okay, I've got a discrete signal for this channel and this channel, but maybe the one in the middle doesn't have discrete information. Sure. It looks, it takes ambient information from those two, time aligns it correctly, and puts it into that speaker. So it, even though the, chan the speaker really isn't getting direct signal, right. it is putting out sound that supports the immersive experience. Yeah, because if somebody's going to put a bunch of speakers, they want to make sure they're utilized, right? Absolutely, all the time, right? Yeah. You don't want something not playing, so. Yeah, and so I love the fact that this room is just, I mean, it's a gorgeous room. Like, is. this is super cool. I love people doing thematic rooms, and here we have this beautiful Star Wars design theater room. Everything's kind of hidden, you know? We've, we're going to look at the Storm Audio processor and his rack in just a little bit and everything out there, but... If somebody doesn't have maybe the big room like this, like a lot of you guys at home, you might be like me and you just got a 7.1.4, 7.2.4, maybe a 9.2, whatever. Does Storm Audio have something like for those guys, you know, because, I mean, this is a 24 channel processor. I think you've got a 32 channel processor. That's correct. For those really, really big rooms. But what about for maybe the small rooms? Does Storm even offer something for them? So, you know, we have processors that go down and they go down to 16 channels. But okay. one of the things we introduced this year was our new ISR Fusion 20 receiver. Yeah. So now we actually make a receiver where it's all built into one box that saves some money. Sure. And in addition to that, you can do still pretty high channel counts on it. You can do up to 20 channels. But you also have the ability to bridge amp channels to give more power to your fronts and do a smaller channel count system. And, you know, really, as you know, I think Joe and you guys talked about calibrations and how important that is. Yeah. But all those calibration tools are still built into the receiver, just like it is in the 24 channel that we've got here. Super cool. So regardless of you got the Big Mac Daddy 32, the 24 or the AVR, you're still getting that same engine, I guess, right? That's correct. So yeah. you get all that processing. and. Something like this, when you're really trying to get the best performance, Storm offers some tools that maybe, like I said, my receiver doesn't. Yeah, and that's really a huge thing. I mean, you know, the room profoundly affects the sound of any speakers in it. And, you know, you've got to be able to factor that room out of the equation. And I can't stress enough how important that is because it's, you know, I would equate it to this. You know, when you go to a nice movie theater experience, it is factored out. The room is pretty much negated because of its size. But in homes, we're much smaller and we have more acoustic issues. And having a really good tool set in the processor to be able to factor that out of the equation is huge. And it brings you closer to the movie content, you know. Uh, you know, when we sat in here and he fired up that system, yeah. you're drawn into the movie in a second. Yeah. Literally, it's like a second and you're like, you know, all of the thoughts about the, wor the world around us are gone. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want to be close to that. You want to be drawn in and be, uh, you know, as close to that cinematic content or the, mu the music. That was the other thing. Yeah. That was pretty the killer, Zimmer, right? Yeah. Dude, that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I was hearing drum tracks doing this panning that, that's just phenomenal. And it was one that, honestly, I've had that that blu-ray for a long time and i kind of have my go-to's but it was great joe was like hey i want you to check out this track mm -hmm. and hearing the drums just pan around the room i'm like dude that's a cool use of all these speakers and that used them all yeah. i mean that's the thing it was very immersive and again you know again to joe's credit he did great calibration in here so it was good stuff one so. thing i can say about your system and, and what you're talking about it's really balanced i mean like you said nothing stands out above the rest it's super cohesive. We were listening to the Hans Zimmer and, you know, the drums are happening, the crowd's cheering and you hear all the orchestral uh, music playing and the different uh, components there. And then I'm listening to the drums specifically and they're like bouncing back and forth between speakers. I'm like, dude, that's super cool. And then, of course, we watch Ready Player One. Uh, that's a go to for many of us. Great scene. And every little coin when they would you know a car would run into something and the coins would scatter it was just so intricate and so detailed in your atmo speakers in your side surrounds of course in the front and so i love the fact that it's super balanced it wasn't crazy over the top i've been to some theaters that they've got massive massive subwoofers and i like that i really do but yours is very balanced and so i definitely can appreciate that well this so this whole room is is a floated room inside of a room 
So when this when the subwoofers are pounding, it mm -hmm. shakes the whole room. I mean, you can feel, you know, this this really four thousand watts, a little less than that, but because I'm not pushing them all the way, yeah. um, it can it can it can really get this room rocking, kind of stuff. I just don't want to be seasick. Sure. <laughs> this whole room is, is is isolated from the rest of the house yeah. and the from the slab using rubber U, U boats. Mm -hmm. I have about 400 of them there for the weight of this room. Yeah. Um, but so, but that the subwoofer can cause this room to shake up and down, and mm -hmm. I just don't want to, you know, be pounding the whole room. <laughs> yeah. So we've got 11 bed layer speakers, right? So yeah. LCR up front. Do you know the model numbers yeah. that you so, chose in here? So we have L eight eyes in the front. Okay. And that is that. That's each one of them has eight mids. Sure. And then we, there's a basically a five foot of, of uh, planar magnetics yeah. line array, yeah. so for all the highs. And then literally right next or between the the two OC, uh, LCRs yeah. are the um, the subwoofers. Yeah. So it's all kind of cohesive. Right. And I also like to do that with um, the whole speaker package. I don't mm -hmm. like using different manufacturers because it's a little sometimes harder to get them to play nice with each other. Sure. And so sound we have, cohesive. Yeah. So we have uh, on the sides, we have uh, uh, P4Is. Okay. And there's and three have, on the side, three, three on, on the other side. Yep. Three on the left, three on the right, and two for the rear surrounds. Okay. And then we have P2Is, which is the, in the ceiling. And, and both of those speakers are almost exactly the same, except for the P4Is have two more mids, and okay. then the P2Is just have two less mids on them. Yeah. So they still have two mids, and then the planar magnetic in the center, and the same in the P4Is has four physical mids than then the uh, the planar magnetic in the center. Yeah, so. and one thing I noticed, so with Wisdom Audio, they have a technology, uh, I went to one of their training, their dealer training, which was really cool, it just gave me some insight. And so on their line source speakers, you know, when you've got multiple rows like here, every speaker has its own dispersion, vertical dispersion. Normally the vertical is less than the horizontal dispersion. Yeah. But by having a taller speaker, now you're covering. So even if you added a third row that was even higher, because your back row is really high, yeah, those have no problem covering that because no. of their they're, height. They're very, they're, so that's about a five, almost six foot speaker. Yeah. And so it goes you know, way down to the bottom of the screen, all the way to, actually a little above the top of the screen. Sure. But so that, that's, that's the reason I did the 11, because yeah. I really wanted the, the sides to be heard by everybody equally yeah. um, from the front row and the rear row. Sure. So, and then, of course, the, the Atmos for the Atmos. But um, that was kind of the goal. That was kind of the goal is to get it. it yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody have a good sound. Well, you have achieved that, my friend, because oh, it sounds phenomenal. And like I said, very, very cohesive, very immersive, um, just spectacular sound for sure. Well, the, the first goal really was that I wanted a place I could come watch movies as loud as I want at any time. Yeah. I work a lot during the day. So I get off, I want to you know, watch a movie at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. if I wanted to. I don't want to be disturbing the neighbors. Sure. I don't want my daughters to sleep. I don't want to be disturbing her. Or if I have relatives here, I don't want to be disturbing them. Yeah. And so luckily, kind of the way we built this room, um, I mean, it totally keeps the sound inside. Mm -hmm. Floating floor, the walls are built on top of that floor. The, the joists in the ceiling are built on top of those walls. Okay. It's literally nothing is connected to the rest of the house. Yeah. It, the only thing that's connected to the rest of the house is sitting on top of the rubber. Yeah. And that rubber kind of, um, with, with the right number of them, sure. um, they, if they're not compressed and they, they have a little squishiness, right. they'll, they'll keep that sound inside. But then there's a lot of other things we had to do to, to, around that. So yeah. it's not just one thing you do. Right. There's a number of yeah. things. You did the green glue. You did the super thick drywall, drywall on both yeah. sides. You isolated the room, used the isolation feed, I guess I'll call them, yeah. to kind of keep the room separated from the foundation. And then you even got this crazy, ridiculous, massive, not even just one door, but you got two doors come <laughs> into the room. Tell us about that. Yeah, so these, uh, these are kind of really special, special order doors. They have a, 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 ceiling, a, a ceiling system, um, so when you close the door, um, the top uh, right and left of the of the of the door mm -hmm. is is compressed against the frame with a with a uh, gasket. Okay. And then when the door shuts, there's a pin that pushes a um, a barrier down to the floor with rubber that blocks the sound from going underneath oh. the door. Nice. Now th there's the there's a so I built a room inside of a room. So there's a there's a door for the inside room. Yeah. Then there's a two and a half inch gap, and then there's a door for the outside. Right. 
So both of those doors are 300 pounds each wow. and many solid layers. And then, like I said, there's this, this membrane that drops down and blocks off the sound. Yeah. So it was actually, it's, this room is actually airtight. Yeah. And they have to deal with a f extra stuff when you have an airtight room. Sure. So I have an air uh, energy recovery ventilator system that runs 24/7 that mm -hmm. that you know keeps the cold in and keeps the hot out depending on on uh, what time of year it is. But um, it allows fresh air into the AC system yeah. to uh, give you know continuously bring fresh air into here. You don't want to have you know no air and then and stale air, stale air. Yeah. But uh, so there was you know special AC system, special extra air brought in. Right. Um, the, the AC system was specially ran to cut down its noise. Sure. Super quiet yeah, in here. Super quiet. So. And one thing that's good about doing that when you're thinking about building a home theater, by having those, that isolation, not only are you trying to keep sound inside the room, you know, and es escaping out so that the quality remains in here, but also it doesn't disturb your neighbor, it doesn't disturb your wife who's, you know, on a Zoom call for work or your kid's asleep or whatever. But it also opposite. What if they're making noise out there in the kitchen or they're playing music or whatever? You can still come in here, have an amazing experience and not even hear that because the last thing we want is to have things that take us out of the movie experience. Yeah, exactly. I'm you know? totally, that's, that's the room is made for that. Yeah. Is, I mean, the whole reason for the projector booth yeah. is to keep that, the noise of the projector, not take me out of the mood of what I'm you know, involved in. The reason for the quality of the sound keep me in there the the brightness of the of the of the screen the brightness of the laser the quality of the stream the the masking it's all for that so eric one really important part of having an enjoyable experience in the theater room is some comfy seats and so tell me what you chose here so um you know I, I, everybody goes for the valencia seats and i would have but i had a slightly different requirement mm -hmm. um yeah i wanted my seat to be nice and comfy i I have a, a bad knee, and so I need something that, that sits up uh, or that I can put my feet up sure. uh, for blood circulation reasons. But um, I also wanted something where my daughter my wife could come in and we can snuggle and hug each other and not have a big, huge thing in between yeah. us. So this is actually removable, yeah. so we can take this out. We've taken, yep. we've taken yours out. Got my little uh, control here. I like that you're, even though it's a couch format, you still have the ability to, to recline this one. Yeah. And I don't see that a lot in home theater seats. Yeah, that was the big reason I went with these seats. These are by uh, Octane. Okay. And these are the like LHR, um, uh, you know, nice leather, everything, yep. and fully. The biggest thing is this got this got proper lumbar. Mm -hmm. The this got a really good headrest, and the and the and the seats come out. It's got cup holders. It's got a deep wells for. All the junk and extra sure. remotes and everything and and places tray for tray tables and all that kind of good stuff and um so i wanted i you know the, the most important thing was we need to be able to remove these we, we can huddle yeah. but when i'm in here 99 percent of the time by myself yeah so i wanted to put these back so i have something to hang on to sure. somewhere to put my drink and that kind of stuff and then for the back seats again we have a love seat just in case i have somebody a family wants to sit together and right. not have like i said a big junky thing in the in, in between them sure um, but also wanted them to have the same comfort of the the legs and every, all that good stuff. So, yeah. um, I found these and and uh, and of course you know we 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 selected these and then built the room around it. Yeah. So uh, the the we have almost no space for the for the steps up here. But mm -hmm. so if I ever change seats, I, <laughs> I'll be out of, out of luck. Sure. One thing I like that you did in this room, and some people don't think about this when they're building a theater room. Is like you said, a lot of times it's just you, and let's face it, I mean, if you have a theater room, dedicated room, a lot of times it is just us. We're gaming yeah, or we're, watching a movie or listening to music. It's not the, the best pastime for my wife coming <laughs> here and sit next to me and watch movies. So. Yeah. <laughs> but what I love that you did is you made sure to have a single, like a center seat. So you went with three in the front, but then there's four in the back. And so back there, there's not going to be a dead center, but at least for the primary viewing position and listening position, you've got the money seat right here in the center. Yeah, I've I've had about 18 kids in here, mm -hmm. all around that nine nine years old yeah. uh, 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 nine years old level. So we literally had like about 18 kids all over the place. Two yeah. or three kids per seat sure. in the front, in the back, all over the floor. We had some bean bags, and so it's 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 versatile. It's versatile. What a cool party that would have been! Like you know, to be a part of that, coming over to a friend's house and going, "Holy cow, your dad's got this! <laughs> you get to have this every day. That's amazing." Well, I like I said that. I 
I wanted something a little unusual. Um, um, we we looked at a few things over on the internet, and and um, I was looking for just like a geometric pattern on the walls. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I, I I really wanted to do was have you know fabric on the walls mm -hmm. to kind of absorb some of that sound. I sure. want that, that again to bring that noise floor down as much as possible. Um, but again, you need you, you need some diffusion, so that's the columns, and. Um, um, so I, f I found a few pictures, uh, uh, some geometric pattern. Well, I said, oh, that's okay. Um, then I found a Star Wars theme yeah. uh, theater that was made in China, and it was I thought it was the best thing that could could ever be done. So right. I, I I I I showed it to my wife, not yeah. expecting that she would be, you know, Overly even enthused. yeah yeah definitely not. And, but she was ecstatic over it. And she said, mm -hmm. yeah, you do that. Isn't it? Cause she knows it's, she knows it's ninety nine percent my room. Sure, it's you know yeah I bring guests in here, but this is my room. Yeah. <laughs> so, so she gave um, the thumbs up. She gave the thumbs up. It. Yeah, and it, I I didn't want to go. I mean uh, some some the, some um, um, Star Wars home theaters or any themed home theater sure. sometimes it can be over the top, especially right. if it's if you have to sell the house or right. it goes on to somebody else. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a kind of strikes a balance of being yeah. you know very Star Wars themed, but. Is also not over the top and is totally livable with anybody else that ever bought the house. And sure. hopefully, I'll never sell. I don't want to really move, but right. yeah, things happen. Uh, but uh, I, 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 I giggle a little bit every time I walk in. That's so. And that's what's important, that, man. That, yeah, that you've, does it. You've created a space that works for you, and I know my audience. There, some of them are. You're going to look at this room, and you're going to love certain aspects. And certain aspects, you're going to. I would have done that differently, and that's totally okay. The point of these. Home theater tours is to provide you guys with inspiration so that when you're building, maybe you don't have the budget for wisdom audio, but you love the fact that, you know, the way that this is designed or the way that the speakers are hidden, you can take that concept and apply it to any size room, any size budget. And so that's really what I love sharing with you guys, but I also love sharing your story. And I love the fact, Eric, that you have been involved in every aspect of this. And I know my audience appreciates that. It's easy for somebody to just write a blank check and go, well, I say easy, if you got the money. <laughs> it's easy to write a blank check and go, hey, just build me something cool. That wasn't you. You were like, hey, look, here's my idea. Here's some thoughts. Here's, here's what I'd like to see. Here's my vision. And then you brought in, you know, your, your uh, integrator to come in and go, okay, all right, I know some brands that would work really well with your vision. And, and here's some components that we can put together in this room. And and I love the fact that it was just a team effort, man. But you were involved in every aspect of that, from the you know, doing the green glue and the the double this and the big you know thick doors and all of it. Yeah, it's 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 not so for the acoustic side of it, the, the isolation. It's not easy to find somebody who knows how to do that. So mm -hmm. I I teach myself how how that. I read sure. a lot of books. I luckily I had a background in, in sound and music anyway, but. Yeah. I um, had to do a lot, you know, I've never built a studio before. Right. Um, uh, I mean, I have a small studio for, for doing some music stuff, but it's, it's not isolated. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's basically an open room. Sure. Um, but I had a, um, a, a certain idea that I wanted to do in this room. I didn't want to disturb anybody. Mm -hmm. I wanted to keep it in here. I want to have, a, I want to have the, the best room that I could afford. Mm -hmm. I did have a budget. I wasn't unlimited sure. on the money that I could spend in here. Um, so there, there were a lot more expensive options for things, mm -hmm. and I chose where to spend the money. Yeah. Um, and, but so I didn't maybe get you know the the highest end wisdom thing, but mm -hmm. I got what I thought was for my budget was going to work really well. Yeah. I mean, some of the things that I chose maybe not best for somebody else. Like sure. I, I just didn't want speakers on the floor, or subs on the floor. I wanted everything hidden. I definitely wanted to keep the the aesthetics like you know the fabric walls right. and all the speakers hidden. So um, it it you know it's just you, you figure out what your budget is and you build to that budget. You get the best you can. Like I in my living room, I don't have wisdom. I would have liked to have wisdom, sure. but you know I'd rather have spent that money in here and not in my living room yeah. or my my bedroom. I have some some cheaper uh, set of speakers for that stuff. Sure. But they're in walls also. I also have in wall subwoofers in my living room and in my master bedroom. But again, I you know it's I spend a little more on those, a little less on the speaker package, mm -hmm. but it, it gives me what I want there. It gives me you know, a nice base for watching a movie with the kids or the, you know, whoever comes over. Um, if we really want to be serious, then we come in here. <laughs> right.
So one of the important things was to keep all the equipment outside of the home theater uh, to keep the noise floor down. So I have this, this networking closet with um, all the different components. So the left rack is all home theater, and then the, the other racks of the rest of the house and computers related. So at the top here, we have uh, the switch that handles connecting the Clyde Escape, the Apple TVs, and the Mad VR, all the updates so for all the, all the stuff. And we have uh, H, uh, Blu-ray, um, uh, you know, universal uh, player that can play from any region. Then we have uh, basically fan, uh, uh, Clyde Escape, uh, 88 terabytes. Then we've got a bunch of Apple TVs, uh, Asus, the um, Clyde Escape players. Then another fan. We have the uh, Clyde Escape 48 terabyte, a fan. Um, the living room Blu-ray player, same same model. Uh, utility drawer with manuals and roads. We have the Mad VR Extreme, the NV Extreme. Then we have the awesome Storm Audio uh, processor, audio processor, another fan, and then we have all of the Wisdom amps. So we have four subwoofer amps, and then we have uh, two eight um, uh, speaker amps. On the right side, we have uh, the equipment for the rest of the audio systems in the rest of the house. So these two switches handle uh, top of rack switch, and then the second switch handles all the Sonos uh, Ethernet. So uh, each of these handles uh, at least two speakers, sometimes four speakers in different uh, rooms of the house. So this, this different Sonos, those are like, uh, you know, awesome. They all synchronize. Then we have a couple Sonos uh, ports on the bottom. At the bottom of that is the Sonos rack. So they handle uh, the master bedroom, to, um, sending the sound to uh, a receiver that's in the room. So we play on those speakers. And we also have um, uh, cool and hot tub speakers that have their own amplifier, so that we don't need a, a Sonos amp, we just have a Sonos port there. So further down, we have the uh, Yamaha uh, A88 receiver for the living room. Then we have another fan. We have the also the same Yamaha uh, RX A88 for the master bedroom. A fan. Then this is the... Amplifier for the sub in wall subwoofers for the living room. Then we have another fan. Then we have the amplifier for the in wall subwoofers of the master bedroom. Then we have a coastal source uh, amplifier for the four speakers around the pool. And then we have a um, Rotel uh, amp for um, uh, speakers in the living room to give them a little more set of just what the receiver could offer. And then around the corner, we have um, the control for security systems, automation, uh, home networking, uh, 10 Wi-Fi hotspots in the house. Um, and then we have some 10 gigabit switches. We have some servers, UPSs. So we have just a few cables coming into the room. The ones on the left there come in from the home theater, which is all the speakers and the, uh, the uh, HDMI and the uh, uh, LED cables, and then a couple extra Smurf tubes in case we need to run anything back to the projector uh, in, in the future. Then we got more cables that come from the rest of the house, which are all the speakers to the Sonos, all the automated blinds, 10 gigabit Ethernet. Then we have you know, lots of other Ethernet for other TVs and, and the drop points and computers and security system and stuff like that. Um, on the side of the rack, we have, so it's, sometimes you have to be next to the equipment to, to make it work right. So we have these nice monitors to show you what's on the, uh, on the televisions or the home theater projector or different sources. And we also have uh, uh, two redundant AC systems uh, in this tiny little room to uh, keep everything cool and, uh, and behaving nicely and <laughs> not melting down. So Anthony, I know you played a huge role in making Eric's dream come true in this awesome home theater. Kind of tell us who you are and what role you played in this project. Yeah, so we're Innovative Sight and Sound. Uh, we have a bunch of different divisions now to basically pull off any large project that we need to. And uh, in this particular instance, it was really cool working with Eric because he's very, very passionate about yeah. what he does and he definitely knows his, his stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of cool as an integrator to work with someone like that who you can kind of work with them and off them and kind of see what they really want to do to accomplish. And they're 
providing input as much as you are. So sometimes mm -hmm. you're telling them about things that may, they might not know about, and sure. then vice versa, they're telling you sometimes things that maybe you're not familiar with. And it's really cool bringing them together with different brands and manufacturers that help fill that, that goal and needs. And yeah. as a company, we've always identified brands and manufacturers that you know, not only have good quality products, but mm -hmm. also people behind them that we want to do business with and, and really stand behind and support their products so that you know, someone like Eric can really get a great end user, user experience. Yeah, and to make the end user experience, what are some things that you did in this room to make it easy for like him and his family to use and even some cool stuff that I'm looking at here that we talked about earlier. Yeah, so a common misconception is, you know, if you spend more on electronics, they're gonna get more complex and more Correct. complicated and harder to use. Yeah. And in a lot of cases, it's kind of the opposite is true. Uh, as we get involved with different brands and manufacturers that allow for integration, like Control 4 is an example. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we used in here. Right. And it allows us to tie all of these expensive pieces of electronics that normally would be cumbersome with, mm -hmm. you know, six, seven different remotes, sure. all together with one, you know, easy to use remote where he can change lighting scenes, yeah. he can change what aspect ratio his screen is on, turn the whole system on and off with a couple buttons. So, you know, he can really share that with his family and he sure. can use it on a daily basis without being frustrated and annoyed. So yeah. that's kind of the goal behind everything we do is just to make it simple and, and easy to use because it's supposed to be fun. Right. <laughs> Get some cool technology, but make it easy. because. Honestly, there's a lot of probably your customers that mm -hmm. they're not as tech savvy as Eric. No, and so you need not. to be able to make it watch movie, turn off movie, turn on lights, turn off lights, theater mode, things like that. And the cool thing about Control for it is expensive, but it just works and you have so much control literally over every aspect of those components that you choose to put in this theater room yeah. so that you can easily go, okay, I want this to be this. In my case, I've got a bunch of different components and I don't have control for, so I have to pull out my phone, go to the app, tell it I want, you know, and so there's multiple facets to that. It definitely makes it more cumbersome. Yeah. My wife won't even come in the theater room. <laughs> even though I've tried to make it simple, she's like, nah, it's too complicated. And so I love the fact that as an integrator, you're able to take this complex solution. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got massive speakers, a lot of amplifiers. We've got a really high-end processor and you've just made it simple. Yeah, I mean, at its core, automation is really about scenes. So it's taking something that you're going to do time and time again, day after day after day, and you want to simplify that down into a button push so that you can just come into a room and recall that over and over again. So as an example, like in here, we have over 700 feet of LED tape to you know pull off this decor that he has. Right. And we can change this to any color we want, but there's a specific color tone he wants to match what he's going for in the room, mm -hmm. you know, with the different lights and whatnot. And we've programmed that all so that every time he goes to turn on the room, right. it's the same thing over and over and over again. And I don't know if you notice, it even staggers a little bit when you first turn it on to kind of look like it's slowly turning on the room like you would see right. in an actual uh, Starship. I so love it. It's kind of neat. One of the things we really wanted to do is make um, all this technology very easy to use for my daughter who's, n who's nine and my, my wife who's not very technical. So um, one of the things I had our integrators do is install Control 4. So the entire house, our security system, cameras, lights, and including this entire room is all controlled by Control 4. So we can uh, connect into any source with a single button and it automatically changes the screen to the right aspect ratio, changes the um, projector to the right zoom, I can go into Xbox, Apple TV, the Clyde Escape, Blu-ray player, and go into the Shield TV and uh, into the, the Mad VR Envy uh, uh, on-screen display stuff. But I also can change the, um, the lighting, um, change the color of the lighting, have a full theater on, theater off. Uh, so when I turn the uh, theater on, it actually lowers the temperature by a couple of degrees on the thermostat. Uh, to keep it kind of cool in here, nice and comfortable for everybody once you get a lot of bodies in the room. And then uh, 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 turns on all these lights and sets the right colors and things. So Anthony, if somebody wanted to get an integrator involved in the process, like where along the stage of, of the planning and preparation, when do they hire somebody like you? Yeah, so usually ideally we want to be in as early as possible. Uh, the earlier you get in, the more options that you have. That's mm -hmm. kind of like what we tell everyone. Okay. So by being in as early as humanly possible, you know, there's a lot of advantages in terms of construction and not having to redo or undo things mm -hmm. that you get from that pre-planning stage. So Eric's luckily smart enough to know 
let's do this before we even start breaking ground on anything. Yeah. So, I mean, I was dealing with Joe from Wisdom and planning out positions of the speakers and how the room was going to look and architecturally how we were going to separate things in here to, to make the everything you know flow together yeah. and be evenly spaced prior to him actually having anyone even pour con the concrete slab in here. So it really allowed everything to flow together seamlessly. It allowed as many options as are on the table available to him. So he yeah. wasn't, you know, painted into a corner of, oh, I have to do this because this construction only allows for this. He could essentially right. do whatever he wanted. Um, and that also helps, you know, from an installation standpoint. We have a great team of guys that yeah. we have on our staff that pull off projects like this. And um, they really are helped along by the fact that there's planning in place so they know where things go, where to pull wires. Um, again, with this LED tape, there's you know hundreds of feet of cable that have sure. to be run and they are knowing exactly where to pull each one through the right. drywall, where it's going to ultimately land, how to label things back in the rack. And that just makes the project a lot more seamless, a lot more aesthetically pleasing yeah. and uh, everything just flows together and works well. One thing I, that I heard you say that, that I've never really realized, working with an integrator You've got access directly to these companies. You said mm -hmm. you contacted Wisdom directly and like, hey, help me design this room. Where should we best place the speakers instead of just having one person's wisdom, uh, one person's knowledge base and experience? You're tapping into those mm -hmm. manufacturers directly going, hey, how can we collaborate together to make this just a really, really cool space for the consumer. Yeah, as I said earlier, with relationships, um, you know, we have lots of vendors that have lots of resources available to us and it's great to get them involved. And they're very passionate about the products that they sell and that's kind of how we choose them as, as manufacturers to align with. And usually they're more than happy to, to help us out, give us advice, make sure that everything is done as close to their specifications as possible. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's, it, a room like this doesn't get pulled off by one person, obviously. It's, it's a collaborative effort and you know, that's why this room came out the way it did. It's a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Sure. Now, do y'all just service like the Tampa Bay area? How far out do you go? We actually have five locations. Okay. So we're in Birmingham, Alabama. We're in Destin, Florida, Atlanta, Charleston, and the Tampa Bay area. Cool. So if somebody want to reach out to you, what's the best way? Uh, just shoot us an email or go on our website, uh, beinnovative.com. And I'm sure you'll put a link or something in I something will. below. Yeah. And uh, just reach out to us and uh, there's a form and tell us what, you know, we can help you with essentially. Now, if you enjoyed this video, click here to check out this $1 million Star Wars home theater. Again, a huge thank you to Wisdom Audio and Storm Audio for sponsoring this video. And as always, God bless, and we will catch you in the next video.